Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Viktor, and I came a long uh, way from Poland to Oslo to tell you about conference scheduling problem, about project that I'm working on to solve this problem, and answer all in all, in all of it. So let's, let's make it work first. Let's start with the problem. Uh, to understand better how agenda uh, preparing is look like, um, let's get through some milestones uh, which are essential for agenda scheduling. Let's say that we already had our uh, call for papers, papers campaign. Uh, we get a lot of proposals and uh, our committee did a great job walking through those proposals and choosing, accepting or sometimes rejecting some of them. Finally, we have a list of talks that we wanted to schedule and actual, actual scheduling is happening here, and agenda stayed the same until the start of the conference. So let's focus on this particular uh, phase. We have our venue, about a bunch of rooms, and we have a list of talks that we wanted to schedule. Uh, we wanted to schedule them in time slots, and of course we would like to incorporate some uh, lunch breaks, coffee breaks along the line. Uh, if you are talking about bigger conferences, then uh, it will be more than one day, and each day can have its own timeline. So how hard it is to just schedule those talks there? Can we do it randomly? Not really. Often it's the case that assignment goes along with the list of requirements attached to it. Uh, and we have to deal with uh, every single one requirement to have this particular, particular assignment in, in our schedule. Let's take a look at, at this example. Let's add our speakers. Does anybody, does anybody see the problem here? Here it is. Richard is an amazing speaker, but presenting two talks in two different rooms at the same time might be quite a bit of a challenge. What next? Oh, Tessa's plane is landing at 12 o'clock, and we have scheduled her talk at 10 there might be a chance that Tessa will not gonna make it on her talk. And look at here, Jonas requires special equipment for his talk, but this equipment available only in room two. So this assignment also broken, we not gonna have this in our, uh, in our schedule. So when it comes to requirement, th there are a lot of them and we will have to deal with every single one. The bigger conference gets, the longer list and to do it manually is extremely complicated task. But let's say that we were able to manage all the requirements. Are we done? Not really. Uh, once all requirements are satisfied, we can turn on our attention to properties of an agenda we would like to have present in our schedule. Let's call them preferences. The difference uh, between requirement and preference is that requirement has much heavier impact on our, on our agenda than preference. Uh, in fact, when all requirements are satisfied, there is no much uh, room left for the preferences. So in most of the cases, preferences are broken. But if requirements is not satisfied, we cannot have this agenda. But if preferences are broken, we're like, eh, okay, we can live with that. So let's see the example. Uh, at this example, uh, all requirements are satisfied, but if we will add difficulty levels to our talks, we can see that we compressed all hard ones in one time slot. So people who are not prepared for hard, hard talks uh, will have no choice here. So we don't want that. It would be much better to introduce some diver diversity. The same logic lies behind uh, content diversity. For uh, and fun ways, this conference could end before the lunch of the first day. And they, all, of, all of us will get to some bar, maybe. Uh, and for people who do, do not know PHP, beginning on the second day is also uh, not very interesting. So again, we would like to introduce some, diver some diversity here. But what if we do not have enough talk to fulfill all the slots? Should we introduce holes in our schedule? It probably would be better to have a second day finished earlier and enjoy more after party or visiting Oslo. Anyway, uh, there are a lot of preferences as well. And which is more, more important, preferences are interacting with each other. 
increasing one preference, you can damage three others. And, uh, and we already know that uh, preferences al almost always will be broken. So what we can do here, we can try to optimize them. We can say that uh, we can calculate how many broken preferences, preferences we have, and let's try to minimize this number. Let's call it a score. And, and now imagine, deal with the requirements, deal with the preferences, which are moving all the time and uh, in, have influence on each other, and do it this manually. This is impossible task. Without proper tool, of course. That is the moment where no conf is stepping in. It's a project that I'm working on to help organizers to deal with this problem. It works like follows. To create a scheme of our agenda, uh, we have to create a timetable time where we define rooms and uh, placeholders for talks, uh, workshops, maybe keynotes, whatever we want. Then we are defining our preferences and requirements, providing uh, configuration to them. And now we are equipped to face the challenge. Uh, now we can assign our talks to placeholders, to our slots, just using dra drag and drop. Yeah, and what's important here, that we will get immediate feedback about uh, whether or not we did breaks, uh, break something. And if we are interested in particular details of this assignment, of course, we can see uh, what exactly went wrong here. But still, having a few hundred stocks to assign is, even having this nice visualization is still a very hard task to do. So let's automate it. Nocon has some, something, uh, impl something. At AI Solver implemented uh, on the back end, uh, which will do this job for us. We just press a button and algorithm will take our data We'll try to satisfy requirements first, then uh, preferences. And as a result, we will have our agenda with a score calculation and detailed information what is going on here. Remember, remember I said that uh, agenda stays the same until the start of the conference? I lied. Because here, we, we, we already published the agenda. People start building plans around it. And in real life, there will be changes. Uh, some flights will be rescheduled, uh, some speaker will, uh, will, will find out that he or she provided a wrong av availability window. So basically it means that in our agenda, which we already published, there are broken constraints and we have to, f we have to fix them. We have to fix them in a way uh, that uh, allows us to not introduce too many changes. So doing this, especially under time pressure, is even more complicated than previous tasks. Fortunately, NoConf has this, this, this uh, specific mode, which is called non-disruptive replanning. And basically it means that, dear NoConf, take this agenda, we already published it. Take this change, introduce it, and please do as little changes as possible to fix all the constraints we have broken and do not, uh, do not decrease preferences and so on. So yeah, this tool will help us to uh, deal with this problem. And it was built using Scala and Elm. So why Elm? Uh, to answer this question, let's jump back at the beginning of the project. Uh, NoConf is a project which has been de developed by two uh, developers. Me and Piotr, who is a full stack developer. So at the beginning of the project, he had some idea about uh, front end development. But in my case, it was a whole different story. Uh, my background was uh, that I started as a C++ developer, then I spent about five years in management. Uh, I did some reading about functional programming, but that was it. Not the best CV for a front-end developer, right? Uh, so at this point, we knew that I had to, have to learn some new technology. And we decided to give Elm a try. Uh, and my first experience with Elm were, were amazingly pleasant. Mm, extremely uh, user-friendly compiler and well-written tutorial helped me to get through the basics. Uh, and I finally understood that, that compiler here is to help me, not to punish me. The biggest advantages at the beginning, I think, it is uh, unified tooling. When I hear about JavaScript world, I keep hearing about these new frameworks, uh, libraries, packet managers, and so on. Uh, it might be over overwhelming, especially for the beginner, uh, when you do not, 
where you are not sure what you are looking for. But with Elm, it's a great example that less is more. Uh, type system safety. Uh, ty type safety uh, helped me to avoid uh, sleepless night debugging, trying to understand why my program crashes when I press the button. So I invested this time into actual learning and doing stuff. Thanks, Elm. Uh, and addition, last but not least, in interesting aspect of it, uh, it's a relatively easy type system. Uh, at the beginning, uh, when do you do not have a lot of experience, uh, understanding of monads, type classes, and applicative functors might be very difficult. But with Elm, you don't have to have this knowledge. You can be productive from the start. So the more we were working with Elm, the more we were convinced that, is, uh, that we are moving in the right direction. But sooner or, or later, we have to face challenges that are not coming from lack of knowledge or an experience. First of which was choice of UI library. Um, not having a lot of experience designing uh, UI elements, we decided to use some existing implementations. Uh, L in MDL, it's a library, uh, it's a port of Google's implementation uh, material design light. And we were satisfied with it until we find out that it has stopped being maintained. Uh, M19 already came out. Uh, we want to benefit from all the improvements it brings to the table, but we can't because there is no new version of MDL. So at the end of the day, we had to make a choice. Uh, and we did rewrite our application uh, using Bootstrap, and we are satisfied with uh, time, time compilation uh, with uh, asset size and so on, but it came with the price. Uh, to, to explain the second challenge, let's have a look at these snippets. Uh, it's one of the data types that we are having in our code base to represent the conference. Uh, the thing to notice here is that uh, all fields are repeated in type definition in uh, JSON encoder and decoder. If we will take, take a look at the another, the same here. The same situation here. Uh, when you are doing a lot of prototyping uh, and your data uh, changes a lot, then doing by hand every time is tedious. So we, we had to do something about it. But before we jump to the solution, let's take a look at an another problem, which is similar in symptoms. Uh, to integrate with NoConf, we, uh, we, have, we can use NoConf API. If we have an API, we have to have a documentation for it. Of course, we can manage a documentation file by hand, but then it, it has the same problems like with previous examples. So uh, the, the solution we came up with was uh, to use Scala library, which calls endpoint, uh, which allows us to uh, define uh, our uh, endpoints and interpret it in different ways as a server, as a client, or even as a documentation. One thing we had to do is to create our own interpreter, which takes data types and endpoint, and produces uh, end source code with uh, end type definitions, with encoders and decoders, and uh, of course, API client. So in this way, we solved the problem with the boilerplate, and we are not afraid of m making changes in API. Our documentation, backend and frontend, always uh, consistent. So we, we are happy with this solution. Um, additional challenge that hard to came pass by is these long-standing bugs that are not being uh, fixed for a long time. It's it's okay that software has bugs. We we all know that, but knowing that there is a bug and not fixing it for for a long long time, it rather goes against the ex expectations. Uh, and yeah, we understand that core team has its own reasons uh, to not release very often. Uh, but this, this kind of long-standing long issues might be not good for, for, for the business. But from the time perspective, I can say that uh, our adventure with Elm was very amazing. Uh, as I said, I was working in corporation about eight years. And uh, two weeks ago, I did quit my job to become an Elm developer for the full time. Uh, when it goes to NoConf, it already was used in uh, two real world conferences, uh, DevOps Belgium, uh, which has uh, five days up to 10 tracks each. 
uh, and game industry conference in Poland. So now we are trying to build a business with it. Um, we are very close to public beta. So if you are interested in uh, trying it out, uh, if you know someone who, who had some experience with this problem, or you would like just to play with agenda scheduling using front end written in Elm, just contact us through Twitter or maybe landing page. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions after the talk. And that would be all from my side. Thank you.